let's talk about the biggest shock, at least in my opinion, the biggest shock about cash discounting and surcharging. So these are programs that I'm lumping together in this video because they're really the same idea of passing the cost of processing onto the consumer. Of course, it's done in very different ways, but this idea of passing the cost onto the consumer has gone through several iterations over the last three years. You know, I think the first uh, hurdle, and I was talking to my friend Jonathan Razi over at Cardex the other day, and we both agreed that the first hurdle with these programs was just people getting over the initial concept of like, is this even legitimate? You know, like I was the same way. I'm like, really? Like, are consumers going to be okay with this? Are they going to, you know, shop at another business because we're passing the cost of processing on? Like, what's going to happen? And that hurdle, I think everybody in the industry, I shouldn't say everybody, I'm sure there's still some outliers, but I think the vast majority of people in the industry have kind of accepted that you know, once the market gets going with it and all of that, it, you know, it does catch on and businesses do fine. Certainly there's some business types where it's not a good fit. We all agree with that, but there's a lot of business types that are a good fit for this program. It doesn't seem to negatively impact the buying decisions. Um, I wasn't shocked by that. Um, I was, I, I wasn't sure it was going to work out, but I wasn't shocked that it did. What has actually shocked me is that I really thought that these programs, as they got implemented at scale, meaning, you know, tens of thousands of merchants doing it, I really thought that there would be a much larger kickback, a lot more dust, you know, kicked up um, from Visa, but also from the consumer advocacy groups, uh, especially. And so I've really been surprised by this. And I wanted to share kind of a different perspective today as I was researching. And so what I did was today I took a lot of time and I've actually went back through all the news articles. And so I searched news articles with terms like cash discount, surcharge, non-cash adjustment, and a couple themes that I noticed that I really want to share with you today about this is kind of my big shock. So the first thing that shocked me a, a little bit is that there's really very little about it. it. It really has not stirred up any kind of a national debate. It hasn't stirred up really a lot of media. Um, there's been a few articles here and there. Uh, there was one in New York that came out talking about how consumers are so upset. You know, I can't remember the exact title of it, but the idea was consumers are so upset by these programs. And the article wasn't picked up by anybody. Um, I don't know where they, how they were able to justify that. Reading the article, it was like they talked to three consumers that were upset about it, and somehow that was the trend for the state of New York. It was really stupid. So it was like, okay. And I mean, New York right now has more cash discount than probably any other state in the in the country. So you know, I don't really see that. Um, and so it just really was very quiet. So that was the first trend I noticed. Is it just there's really not much going on, and that doesn't mean there won't be in 2020 or 2021 or whatever, but. So far, it just hasn't really stirred up very much, you know, anger or animosity among consumers. Um, but what really shocked me, and the big one for me, is that the the things I've read from consumer advocacy groups and the studies that have been done and things like that, they they uh, strangely actually come from a totally different angle, and they're really for these programs. It's not that they're against it or even that they're neutral. They're generally in favor of these programs. And the reason that they're in favor of these programs is there's a term you need to understand. It's a term called fully banked, fully banked. And so this is a term that a lot of consumer groups would use. Um, groups like the ACLU use this word, um, you know, study groups, they use this word. And the idea of a, a consumer being fully banked kind of means that consumer has full access to the services that a bank would provide. So this is somebody who has bank accounts, they have credit cards, they have access to capital. It's a consumer that basically has all the financial services that they need, and that allows them a lot of conveniences and a lot of advantages to be able to go out and get rewards or you know, be able to have that convenience of paying electronically and things like that. And you know, the perception might be that, well, in, in America, we're 100% fully banked. You know, everybody has a bank account, everybody has credit cards. No, they don't. Um, actually, when you get down into um, certain minority groups, when you get into lower income brackets, there's actually a huge segment of our U.S. population that is not fully banked. Many times, not they don't have a bank account. They may have a prepaid card like a Walmart money card account or something along those lines, but they don't have credit cards. They don't have access to uh, you know the banking that that you know they want to have access to. Um, and that's, you know, from a socioeconomic perspective, that's really sad and, and very frustrating that our country is still dealing with issues like this, but it's a re it's an economic reality. And so what's interesting is that these groups like the ACLU, they came out with an article strongly advocating for 
passing the cost of processing on to the consumer because the idea is that by merchants, the, the alternative, of course, is that merchants have to cover the cost of processing payments by raising their price for everybody. So the question in the mind of these consumer groups is not, you know, this idea of passing the cost of processing on to the consumer, is that okay? What they're thinking is more, is it fair that people who wish they could have a rewards card, wish they could have a, you know, a certain kind of bank account or savings account or whatever it is, they're not fully banked. Is it fair that they should have to pay the same price to buy an item that someone else who is has more economic means, more rewards, more convenience, should they both be paying the same price for products and services? Should that business owner be raising the rate on everybody? And so from that perspective, the ACLU and others have said, no, we think there should be a differential in the price point. We think that people who are not fully banked, who don't have access to these benefits, shouldn't have to pay the price so that others can experience those benefits. Why should someone who makes less have to pay more so that someone who makes more can pay less? And so when you look at it from that perspective, you'll understand why many of these consumer groups are actually fully in favor of these programs. And they recognize that there is a cost of payment acceptance and that that cost of payment acceptance is going to be passed on to some consumers in some way. It's either going to be passed on to all consumers by raising the price of everything for everybody, or it's going to be passed on only to those consumers who are affecting the price increase by receiving these benefits of being fully banked. And so what's really been interesting to me in this evolution of cash discount, surcharge, non-cash adjustment, all that, what's really been interesting to me is again, number one, we cleared the hurdle of like, are these programs even legitimate? Are they gonna work? Yes. Then we cleared the hurdle of like, no one really even seems to care anyway. It's not like there's this big, you know, kerfuffle in the media and all these stories. I mean, there's really nothing hardly. So that's not a big deal. And then the third one is like, yeah, but then once the consumer groups find out what's going on, they're all going to go crazy. They're going to do petitions. They're going to go to Congress. They're going to get laws passed. They're going to push legislation through. Nothing, really. I mean, I'm sure there's a few things happening, you know, behind the scenes in different state legislatures. But I mean, really, very, very little is happening because the consumer groups actually see these programs. Many of them see these programs as a benefit, which they are. Because their members, generally speaking, they're trying to protect consumers at risk. And the consumers most at risk are the ones that are not getting the rewards, that are not fully banked. So why should they be paying so that other people can use their rewards card? Very interesting trend. One that really shocked me and one that bodes really well for 2020 and beyond when it comes to these programs and this concept of passing the cost of processing on to the consumer.